good evening good afternoon and good morning uh, because we are joining from uh, different time zone i am dr chan kumar shaha professor department of farm power and machinery bangladesh agriculture university would like to welcome you all on behalf of post harvest loss reduction innovation lab bangladesh project in today's virtual annual symposium 2021 the theme of the symposium is technologies in post harvest loss reduction farmers to commercial scale the symposium is taking place virtually due to the unwanted covid-19 pandemic situation the symposium is divided into two sessions inaugural session and panel discussion session and then program will be ended with the closing remarks we are very delighted to have the presence of the representatives of development partners distinguished researchers and acad academicians from the international universities of usa and different agricultural and science and technology universities of bangladesh eminent researchers from the different research institutes deans of the different faculties of bangladesh agricultural university directors of different academics and research entities of bangladesh agricultural university participants from public sector partners like department of agricultural extension bangladesh agricultural development corporation private sector representatives sign mentors and ambassadors students progressive farmers manufacturers distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen very good evening afternoon and good morning to all of you again we hope that you will be with us until the closing of the workshop some housekeeping announcement please keep your microphone mute until you speak in the question and answering session if you have any question during the presentation or panel discussion session you may put your question in the chat box or raise your hand there is a system in the zoom you may turn off your video for better streaming or saving the megabytes of the data if you are joining uh, or connected via cell phones the meeting is being recorded we are live on youtube as announced earlier in the in invitation youtube link can be shared in your facebook pages i hope there should not be any problem from your side in the inaugural session we are very glad to have honorable mr nazrul islam khan curator bangabandhu memorial museum former secretary minister of education former secretary minister of information communication technology governments of the people's republic of bangladesh as the chief guest honorable vice chancellor professor dr lutful hasan uh, bangladesh agriculture university mamanshing as the chief patron professor dr alex winter nelson director edima institute for the prevention of the post harvest loss university of illinois at urban champaign usa professor dr mohammad manjul alam principal investigator post harvest loss reduction innovation lab bangladesh and professor department of farm power and machinery bangladesh agriculture university mamanshing bangladesh Dr. Jagar Harbe, Director, Feed the Future Innovation Lab for the Reduction of Post Harvest Loss, Kansas State University, USA, is the session chair of the inaugural session. In this session, we'll have three presentations from Kansas State University, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, USA, and Bangladesh Agriculture University, Bangladesh. Then we'll go directly to our guest piece. Please hold your questions until the panel discussion session. where we'll get uh, some times for taking questions and suggestion however you can put your question and remarks in the chat box of the zoom platform as well as youtube platform who are joining uh, us from the outside of the zoom platform so uh, our session chair inaugural session session chair is dr jagar harbe before uh, handing my microphone to dr harbe i would like to introduce our session chair dr harbe is serve as the director of feed the future innovation lab for the reduction of post harvest loss at kansas state university since he joined the program in may 2016 he work uh, on addressing a fungal toxin mycotoxin contamination of crops spans more than 15 years from basic research in graduate school through to developing and leading a flagship international research for development program in east africa at the At the Innovation Hub, he is working with the 
team to ensure that their work is effectively translated into information, intervention, and capacity to address post harvest losses in Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Ghana, Guatemala, Honduras, Nepal, and beyond. So I would like to welcome our session chair, Dr. Harbe, to start the inaugural session. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Saha, for that kind introduction. And thank you, Professor Alam and Bangladesh Agricultural University for the honor of partnering with you and for chairing this session. Um, so I want to first say that uh, I'm sorry that I cannot be there in person. Of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic that has changed the way we do business. At the same time, I know that soon we will be able to get together in person again. And in the meantime, I'm very inspired by how the Bangladesh Agricultural University team has continued making progress for the people of Bangladesh with their work. I would like to thank the government of Bangladesh for their support and partnership. Without the government of Bangladesh, we could have no impact. I would like to thank the US Agency for International Development for the funding for our program and the ADM Institute for the Prevention of Post-Harvest Loss at University of Illinois for their partnership and co-funding. And especially I would like to thank uh, Professor Alam for his leadership. The Bangladesh team has really been a shining example of not only what PHLIL can accomplish and what research can accomplish for smallholder farmers and actors throughout the food system. But I will say before the session formally starts, that the Bangladesh team is only one of two countries in PHLIL that is receiving a second costed extension from USAID for a ninth year of activity. We have had a total of eight countries in PHLIL and Bangladesh is only one of two countries to do this. Probably there is a problem. No, I hope he will be joining soon. Okay, I, uh, even in Kansas, we have uh, internet issues sometimes. So I was saying, um, I'm honored to pass to our chief guest, Mr. Nazrul Islam Khan, the curator of the Bangabandhu Memorial Museum and former secretary of the Ministry of Education and ICT. Uh, also in the Ministry of Education and ICT and the government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. So, Mr. Nazrul uh, uh, Islam Khan, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Yeah. Harvey, actually, our uh, chief patron, actually, he's, uh, he's outside of uh, Maimin Singh and he's quite busy today. So, we may ask him uh, to deliver his piece and then. Uh, go to for the presentation and later on we can ask our honorable chief guest uh, to have the, his uh, piece. So, Dr. Harbe, please. So, sorry, Dr. Saha. So, what is the protocol now? Uh, well, well, actually, our chief patron uh, has joined us oh, just chief. for a short time. So, we can ask our uh, chief patron, Dr. Lutful Hassan. Uh, yes. And then we can go for presentation. And later on, we can ask our chief guest uh, to have his space, please. Yeah. I think yeah, that would be very... good to this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Chayam Saha, uh, Honorable Chair, Dr. Uh, uh, Jagar Harvey. And uh, today, our chief guest, Honorable ex former Secretary of Ministry of Education and Ministry of 
ICT, Dr. Nozrul Islam Khan, who is a good friend of mine. And not only that, he's a good friend of Bangladesh Agricultural University. And uh, today our advisor, Dr. Munjurul Alom, Dr. Chayon Shaha, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. Dean of the Faculties, particularly the Dean of Engineering Faculty and all other faculty deans, professors of Bangladesh Agricultural <coughs> University, and the stakeholder from other universities, particularly the professors and the um, uh, officials, those who are attached with us today, and the Cyan ambassador from different university also uh, they came uh, came forward and they are already uh, already attached with this program. So it's a, a huge program. The day before yesterday, we had a very good program here on 16th of this month, and uh, in that occasion. We, we had good reputation we, and uh, the total research, those who are going in in Bangladesh and the development in collaboration with the development partners, particularly University of Illinois, uh, Urbana Champaign and Kansas State University and Bangladesh Agricultural University and other universities of Bangladesh. And uh, there are several, uh, several research institute under the National Agricultural Research System, Ministry of Ministry of Agriculture, ERC, all these important partners are now involved in this system. Because you know very well, Dr. Enai Khan will definitely tell these things uh, in a detailed way in his speech. Uh, but I would like to also inform you that this uh, mechanization project is now going on and we have a lot of achievement actually under the leadership of Professor, Professor Dr. Manjurul Alom and Professor Dr. Chayon Saha, and we have we have our partners from University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, and uh, they they were they were, they are coming over. They came to Bangladesh to see our facilities, and not only in Bangladesh, our team is also working. You already heard it from the brief introduction from Dr. Chayon Saha that our mechanization team also played a very good role in Southeast Asia and other countries, including Africa, and where they, they, they have a lot of achievements. Particularly if, if you, uh, in the last month, we made a program and to appoint some of the Cyan ambassadors so that all the Cyan ambassadors, they are, they are also working very closely. And uh, Bangladesh government under the ministries, several ministries, particularly Ministry of Education, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of uh, Science and Technology, and Ministry of Food, Bangladesh Agriculture and University is uh, closely working and working neck to neck for the development of crops, livestock, fisheries, mechanization, and value addition. So there is a special feature of mechanization from Bangladesh Agricultural University, as you understand, under the leadership of this team, particularly led by Dr. Alam. So, I am very much hopeful that Bangladesh Agricultural University along with other stakeholders and the foreign donors and international collaborators we will be able to contribute significantly into the agricultural production system of Bangladesh. And uh, we need these changes. There are, and hopefully there will be a remarkable change in smart agriculture. And Dr. Enai Khan is really a person and I'm very happy that he has given his time to be with us at Bangladesh Agricultural University because he is having a lot of a uh, lot of knowledge, and uh, through the today's discussion, he will be able to he will be able to ventilate his ideas how this smart agriculture and this mechanization can contribute significantly for the development of the poor people in this in uh, in rural area areas of Bangladesh, and there will be a real change, a dramatic change and a significant change and we will be able to uh, able to uh, address many challenges many difficulties through this uh, through, through through this project or through these interventions and furthermore i would like to add these things with uh, all the uh, all those who are at us today and particularly i would like to inform dr renai khan that there is a huge capacity building is going on under this project number one is the phd and ms students those who are working under this project and some of the undergrads are also involved in the system. So this is a very good opportunity for the capacity building of the human, human capacity building. And through this project, this is going on under the leadership of this project, under Dr. Alam and Bangladesh Agricultural University and all other universities also.
So this is another part. And another part is that the modern, modernization of this mechanization, which is really useful now for, uh, for uh, you understand that the, our honorable prime minister a few weeks back, she expressed her ideas that there will be a cooling chamber of different, different temperature so that we can export our agricultural products abroad as it is with a proper quality. Now we want to address food security, nutrition security, and safe food. These three things are very much important. And we need to increase our production, like anything, and uh, not, only the, not only to increase the production, our quality uh, should be enriched and high quality agricultural product, products will be there and with safe, with proper safety and proper nutrition should be there. This is from my side, from Bangladesh Agricultural University. I am looking forward. I will be attached with you. I would like to hear from, hear the speech of Dr. Nazrul Islam Khan, who is a real friend of us. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and telling something in this respect. Particularly, I would like to extend again, thanks to Dr. Nazrul Islam Khan and Dr. Jagar Harbe because they, they are the people who has taken the lead to be with us in this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vice Chancellor Lutful Hassan. And I think that you've, you've kicked us off on such a good note. We know that Bangladesh Agricultural University is a global leader for food, food security, nutrition security, and food safety, as you've highlighted, and that production increases in production are lie at the core of all of that. So thank you so much for your comments. We sincerely appreciate it. And we sincerely appreciate the partnership of Bangladesh Agricultural University. Um, from here, I'll pass on to the chief guest, Mr. Nazrul Islam Khan, again, the curator of the Bangabandhu Memorial Museum and former secretary of the Ministry of Education and ICT of the government of Bangladesh. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh our uh, session chair and uh, researchers, uh, Dr. Manjurul Alum. And uh, uh, I see the, some of the ambassadors that are still connected with us. This is a special occasion, I would say, because uh, nowadays, you know, collaboration and networking is very important. And it is especially important for Bangladesh because Bangladesh is a rainy country. Is, uh, uh, our farmers always face some uh, problem during uh, harvest. Uh, and when it is uh, rainy season, then it's more problematical for them. So I hope this research would uh, bring forth new ideas and technologies that would help the farmers. And uh, since our women are involved particularly uh, harvesting and post-harvest uh, stories and conservation, they would be immensely, uh, you know, benefited. A special, I, I offer a special thanks to uh, American University, the Kansas State University and Illinois University as well. Uh, they are offering, along with the USAID, offering this uh, networking and, you know, uh, networking is always, you know, helpful. And I think after this research, this technologies, knowledge and innovation would be disseminated among not only our Bangladeshi uh, farmers, also uh, other parts of the country. And I learned that there are many other countries involved in this research and the interaction among these uh, partners would also create new other adaptive uh, knowledge, ideas, and technologies. I should not talk much. We should learn more about uh, the research. I thank the research team again for uh, uh, taking this pain to research. I thank the USAID for you know, bridging these uh, two universities, our best uh, university, uh, Bangladesh Agricultural University. In fact, they are providing our nation with food securities, nutrition securities, and um, also the, uh, you know, 
they are contributing in political areas as well. When there is food shortage, there is um, price increase, there is always problem. Historically, particularly in Bangladesh, it is uh, uh, it is the fact. So I hope we'd be going to the presentation. I would request to go for this presentation, and if there is time, then we'll talk something about. I'm especially proud to join in this program because you know you learn that I'm a retired person, so this is recharging for me, uh, and um, uh, this is uh, also a, a special occasion where I find that uh, university professors, ambassadors, all together, 115 persons are connected. So thank you very, very much again, the, our Agriculture University, our American partners, USAID, and those ambassadors who are still connected with all of us. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much, Chief Guest. We very much appreciate those comments. And I think your perspective is a, a really important way for us to look at the road ahead at what needs to be done to help the farmers and others along the value chain and to apply research and innovation to secure the harvest. So, um, so we did have a slot, Dr. Saha, for USAID. I know that our colleagues at USAID think very highly of the work that you're doing. Again, Bangladesh is only one of two countries in our program that's receiving a second cost of extension for work in 2022. I do not believe that they were able to join us. They have, uh, it's early here and they have other obligations as well. Is that correct, Dr. Saha? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, sir, can you respond, sir? Oh yeah, actually we invited uh, uh, the US site mission in Bangladesh. I know that Dr. Ahmed Kablan, he responded that he might be joined with us and for some time. So if someone from them, so they can talk, yeah, absolutely. Maybe Hopefully. we can go uh, right now uh, for the presentation and later on we can open for the question and discussion. So, uh, Great. Danya Thank you. Um, so from here, um, I've been invited to give a presentation about the post-harvest loss innovation lab. I have a, just a few slides if it's acceptable for me to share my screen. Yeah, you can share that, please. All right, yes. Can you see that properly? Yeah, yeah we can see, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. So it's really been my privilege to, to serve as the director of the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for the reduction of post-harvest loss. And there's no team that has been more successful than the BAU team. Um, our innovation lab is one of 21 innovation labs, which are funded by the US government to work with partner countries and in-country partners uh, to improve food security and health. And I'll just reflect back on my first visit to Bangladesh. Uh, previously to working at Kansas State University, I had worked in Kenya for seven years as part of an African Union initiative. So I had, and we served 13 countries in Eastern and Central Africa. I had done a lot of traveling. Originally, I was born in Haiti in the Caribbean. And so I had seen a lot of research projects and I was particularly impressed and inspired by the work of the Bangladesh team. Uh, I think that this team, it, they have the science right. They have the very strong technical background. Everywhere I go, not just in Bangladesh, but in Nepal and elsewhere, uh, I meet uh, the students from Professor Alam. He's had a huge impact in the region, as you all know. Uh, and so really this, this project has been a shining example of, of what to do right. And I think what to do right in this case is to find the research leaders in our partner countries and empower them. When I was listening to the chief scientist of USAID about three years ago at an USAID in, um, annual meeting, he said, it's about time for us to have our in-country partners as uh, principal investigators of innovation lab work. And I raised my hand and I said, in Bangladesh, Professor Alam has been the principal investigator for PHLIL Bangladesh since we began. And he was encouraged to hear that. And I hope it's a model that we can extend 
to other work through other innovation labs and other research programs broadly in international agriculture. I also want to thank again the ADM Institute for the Prevention of Post-Harvest Loss for their very strong leadership and, and support on this project. So if we look at food loss and waste, this is something at, that at the UN uh, Food Systems Summit very recently is very much rising in recognition as something that we need to tackle. So our work is very timely uh, in order to improve food security, nutritional security, food safety, and address factors related to climate change. It has been estimated that about a third of food is lost after harvest, um, and this it's higher in perishables, of course. Uh, 821 million people were hungry or malnourished, uh, estimate by FAO about a year ago, and a trillion dollars of food is lost or wasted annually. FAO estimates this could feed 2 billion people. Sub-Saharan Africa loses as much grain as all U.S. global food aid combined. This and the issues include, uh, as the vice chancellor was saying, food safety issues such as fungal toxins, mycotoxins, and BAU has established a lab in this area. But these are readily addressable as the BAU team has done through a targeted research development approach to accelerate technologies to farmers, the private sector, and others. So again, we just had the COP26 meeting. Climate change was one of the big things that was focused on. And the greenhouse gas emissions from food loss and waste have been estimated to produce 10% of all the greenhouse gases emitted by human activity. This is far more than aviation and iron and steel, and it's approaching the amount produced by all global road transport. So at the Post-Harvest Loss Innovation Lab, you can see here that our partners and the farmers in Bangladesh are front and center. I use this slide at every presentation I give as the capstone slide. Um, we're, we've been seeking to address post-harvest loss issues since 2014. So we started with four uh, core countries. Bangladesh uh, was one of the four. Uh, we had additional funds for Afghanistan, Nepal, and Honduras. We now have a project starting in Malawi. But I, also, I want to reiterate that we are the only innovation lab to get a second costed extension from USAID because of the success of BAU and our partners in Ghana. So Bangladesh and Ghana are only two countries that are continuing in our program. And that is a very big deal. Uh, USAID is really singing our praises for all of, the, all of the successes you've had. So to wrap up, I just wanted to show what we do in all of our core countries. Again, we partner with national research leaders like Professor Alam, uh, Professor Saha, and the rest of the team. We characterize the post-harvest issues and the key value chain intervention points. We adapt and validate appropriate technologies as, you, as you've seen from the BAU team. We package that with extension materials and training programs. And of course, all along, we partner with key stakeholders uh, and end users to propel uptake. We have many partners in our program. Uh, BAU is among the most important as our lead in Bangladesh. And so thank you very much. With that, I'll reserve the time in the session for the other speakers. So our next presentation is uh, from Professor Alex Winter Nelson, a really key partner. Uh, a, a University of Illinois is the co-PI for the Post-Harvest Loss Innovation Lab. Uh, Professor Winter Nelson has offered a lot of leadership insights and expertise uh, and really help to guide the success of this program. Uh, Alex, over to you. Salam alaikum. Uh, and, and thank you uh, to session chair, Professor Harvey. Uh, greetings, everyone here, but greetings especially to chief guest, honorable former secretary, Mr. Nazrul Islam Khan, to uh, chief patron, vice chancellor, Professor Lutful Hassan, and of course, the project leader, uh, Professor Manjul Alam. Uh, greetings also to, to all the other distinguished guests and speakers present here uh, this evening or morning. Um, it is truly a, a pleasure of mine and an honor to be here and give just a few words on, on the theme, technologies and post-harvest loss reduction, farmers to commercial scale. Uh, I won't be using slides, uh, but 
but I do think it's important for me to give a few comments and I am grateful for the opportunity. Uh, as Professor Harvey indicated in the introduction, I'm, I'm from the University of Illinois in the United States where I'm a professor. I also serve as Associate Dean for Research. I'm director of our Agricultural Experiment Station here. And I'm director of the ADM Institute for the Prevention of Post-Harvest Loss, which we call ADMI. In, in all these roles, many of the most rewarding activities I've participated in uh, have involved colleagues at the Bangladesh Agricultural University and partners in the USAID Innovation Lab for the reduction of post-harvest loss. So it's always a priority for me to participate in events that are associated with BAU and with PHLIL. Um, the mission of ADMI is to promote research, outreach, education, and capacity building to reduce post-harvest losses in ways that contribute to environmental sustainability, food security, and poverty alleviation. There's two aspects of our approach to this mission uh, that I think are relevant today. And the first is that we rely on partnership, much as Professor Harvey mentioned. Partnerships are essential for addressing global challenges of post-harvest loss because of the complexity and the context specificity of the problems. Uh, ADMI is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And a decade ago when we were founded, I think many experts tended to see post-harvest loss as a fairly simple problem involving grain drying and finding ways to keep it dry and safe from pests. And those were technical problems that had been solved a long time ago. Uh, but the experience of the last decade has shown us that those problems, or I should say the related problems of access to the solutions, access to the technical solutions, adoption of those technical solutions, coordination of actors along the value chain and other sources of friction in the food system, all inhibit improved post-harvest management and are not simple at all. Indeed, they're very complex. They differ widely from place to place and they require a breadth of expertise and location specific knowledge that can only be mobilized through teamwork and partnership. So ADMI, like Kansas State and the PHLIL, relies on and values partners, uh, partners like those here today uh, in BAU and elsewhere. The second feature of the ADMI approach to post-harvest loss is a commitment to food systems thinking. Post-harvest loss, as you know, can occur at any point in the food value chain. And interventions to address loss at one point, like a farmer's compound, might be found at another part of the system, like a miller's drying and storage capacity or an input dealer's stocking practices or an implement fabricator's floor, uh, or even an import tariff or some other government policy. At ADMI, we try to always place an observed post-harvest loss problem in the context of a larger food system so that we can optimize the interventions. That's the kind of thinking that we see in the approach to technologies for post-harvest loss reduction that are being discussed today. That's the kind of thinking that we see manifested in what BAU has been doing. Our goal to improve the welfare of small scale farmers and the welfare of food insecure consumers, that's central. But the intervention to do that may well involve a technology that enables another actor in the value chain to buy from the farmer, to store and to deliver to the consumer. The technologies that our colleagues at BAU have developed show a really deep respect for food systems. And they're finding innovative pathways that I'm looking forward to hearing even more about today. So to my friends and colleagues at BAU, thank you for your work and for including me in today's event. I look forward to our continued partnership uh, and I look forward to the presentations from the other distinguished speakers. So I will leave the rest of my time for the next presentation Thank you very much.
Thanks so much, Professor Winter Nelson. That was very well said. Um, so, uh, Dr. Saha, we do have Ahmed Kablan with us from the Bureau for Resilience and Food Security in DC and Kevin Fath from the USAID mission. Is it appropriate to pass to them for comment at this point? Yeah, please see. Yeah. Uh, or, up, or maybe after uh, Professor Alam presentation, you can take a few words. Excellent. Yeah, please. Okay, thank you. So Professor Alam, um, Professor Alam has been the, the PI of PHLIL Bangladesh since uh, near the beginning of our program. Uh, again, his team's dedication and really innovative approach to moving innovations to scaling with farmers, with the private sector, through the food system have been a shining example of success. Again, which has been recognized by USAID and others as a model of how to how to proceed. So, Professor Alam, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jaiga. Uh, I'm just sharing my slide first. Uh, thank you, the session chair, Dr. Jagar Harvey. Uh, I'd like to thank our honorable chief guest, Mr. N.I. Khan. I'd like to thank our honorable vice chancellor, Professor Lutful Hassan. And I'd like to thanks again to Professor Bob Jiklat and Dr. Ahmed Kablan is with us, distinguished guests and participants, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and good morning to all of you. This is uh, Manjuru Lalam, uh, Principal Investigator, post harvest Loss Reduction Innovation Lab Bangladesh, and Professor Bangladesh Agriculture University. Welcome you all to my presentation, uh, the technologies in post harvest Loss Reduction, Farmers to Commercial Scale. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce my team from Bangladesh, I myself is involved, and uh, with me, uh, Dr. Chayan Kumar Shaha, Dr. Abdul Awal, Dr. Stomali, and Dr. Smotara, all from Bangladesh Agriculture University, and this is directly uh, working under this team, uh, Phil in Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I will be talking briefly on the context of post processing paid in Bangladesh project objectives and activity framework, appropriate post-harvest technologies, sustainable impact strategies, and urgent policy interventions. First of all, let us see the context of post-harvest processing of paddy in Bangladesh. Bangladesh has many success. Among them, Bangladesh is the fourth largest paddy producer in the world. So since the independence of 1971, the, the production of paddy has increased over three folds to reach 55.4 million tons. Compared to the double the population growth, and Bangladesh has attained the self sufficiency in paddy production. However, Bangladesh is facing many challenges like agricultural land is decreasing by 0.5% per year, and our on farm labor employment is also decreasing. In 2017, it was just 43% of the total labor force in rural labor force. And now it is expected to be reduced to about 20% by 2030. And the drying and storage, especially the post harvest processing of paddy at farmers level are still traditional. And the post harvest loss of paddy at farmers level, as we found from our study, it is around 14% of which the storage drying and storage losses are 3.5% and 6.2% respectively. So these are the context uh, in Bangladesh as well. Now I'd like to introduce the post harvest loss reduction innovation lab that is Philil Bangladesh. Philil Bangladesh started its journey March 2015 and ended its first phase in December 2018. Now we are running the second phase 
started from 2019 and it will be ended this particular in this year, December. I like to actually thanks uh, Jagat and at AME this year. So Bangladesh has got another extension of one year and hopefully we like to keep our pace and we will be continuing as we are now continuing uh, making some progress at the present. So the major objectives of the field in Bangladesh was to identify and adopt appropriate drying and storage technologies of paddy for reducing post-harvest physical and quality losses and thereby extended economic benefits to farmers, especially the women and men, farmers too, and private entrepreneurs, and enhancing their resilience. And to build a coalition among the research, public and private institutions, and entrepreneurs for creating entrepreneurial advances to produce post harvest laws of petty, leading to reduction of uh, poverty and hunger. So we actually followed a conceptual activity framework. In the initial state, we have done the baseline survey to identify promising on the shelf or in the field elsewhere technology as well as the best practices post service technologies. In doing so, we have conducted value chain assessment using participatory approaches involving the stakeholders. In the next step, we assess the technology we have identified and especially the economic and the technical feasibility of those machines as well as end users' perception on this adopted technology. In doing so, we have done extensive laboratory and on-farm assessment. Our third step was to scale up selected PH technologies, that is the post-harvest technologies to wider geographical region and build the capacity of the stakeholder, especially the customized service providers, that is the local service providers. In doing so, we have conducted hands-on training, demonstration, and scaling of the technologies. And as the as a, as a last step, the policy and sustainability, we have had this policy and privacy program, and we try to develop the partnership among the public, private, research and academia, and the entrepreneur and the farmers. In doing so, we continue the policy dialogue national workshops, symposiums, and the private sector partnership we have developed so far. So as I uh, like to mention that the Filil Bangladesh intervened mainly in two areas, one in the area of the drying, another in the storage, at farmer's scale, as well as the commercial scale. As you know, after harvesting of paddy at farmer's level, Farmers, farmers dry the paddy on mud float and under the sun. And then it actually store it in local urban port like Motka or some actually plastic drum or locally called the dole or some of the gola. So in, in, in this process, what we have seen, there is a huge amount of post harvest loss. As I mentioned earlier, the amount of losses we have seen, it is around 9%. In the commercial level, especially in the level of major rice mill and uh, the husking rice mill level, they actually, and as well as the paddy businessman level, they actually, actually purchase the paddy and dry it on concrete floor and under the sun. Again, they store it in the gunny bags and store it in the open, Firehouse. So again, there was a huge amount of post harvest loss. So we, from this Hilil Bangladesh team, we have introduced and we have developed the BAUS to advise our farmers scale and small paddy businessmen's scale to dry the paddy. And it is independent of weather, whether it is raining, but the farmers can use this dryer, as well as the Grain Pro and Pix bags, this is the Yaktite Hermetic bag to store, especially the seed, 
and the consumable products. At the commercial stage, especially in the major rice mill uh, level, we have designed a 12 ton capacity drive that is appropriate and suitable for the rice mill level to dry it, as well as we introduced the hermetic cocoon uh, for large scale storage of padding. And that impact is that uh, it reduced the time, it reduced the cost, it reduced the labor requirement, it reduced the post fertilizer loss from the insect and pest attack, and it also increased the germination capacity of the storm paddy seed. And as a whole, farmer have the return or the entrepreneur have the return. So this was all about the interventions. Now I like to share with uh, you or with you the development pathway of BAOS to drive. As you know, it is one of our, of our major development and contribution at the farmer's level to dry the paddy or all grains that is maize or any granular crop, uh, especially uh, in the rainy time or any time in the year. So in 2011, we actually imported a prototype of STR dryer from Vietnam. You see, and this was the bamboo mat, uh, actual outer and inner pinos there. And then we introduced this rice as briquette as a fuel source. And that is our uh, new intervention with that addition of that. And then again, we tested the dryer for paddy in 2014. But when we have the resources from this post harvest loss, uh, this project, and thanks to USA, the, the future, and our partners, university partners from the USA, we got that opportunity, and we try to work with this BUS to dry development. So first, we actually replace the bamboo mat, actually inner and outer beam with MS wire mesh, and we introduce a generator where grid electricity is not available to operate the blower, and then we introduce a we purchase the temperature monitor to look at the temperature uh, uh, to control in the dryer. So a BOE is still dryer than tested. But during the 2016 to 18, we have actually uh, changed this MSOR mesh to have better life with SSOR mesh. And we actually developed a temperature monitor ourselves because those persons monitors are not working well. And we tested uh, this BOS dryer, dryer on different varieties at the farmer's uh, household in different regions. And we demonstrated it at farmer's level and we piloted it at the farmer's level. During 2019, we introduced again, you know, the blower that was imported from uh, initially from the Vietnam, but now we are manufacturing it in Bangladesh with the locally available spare parts and components. And we introduce fuel as a LPG gas. It is available all over the Bangladesh now. And uh, then we have tested and compared with the previous models. And 2020 and on, we are now scaling that BOS to a dryer all over the country. And more than 200 dryers were adopted at farmers, groups, and seed traders level. And look at the performance of the BOS tread dryer at the farmer's level. BOS tread dryer is a batch dryer, 500 kg capacity, and the drying time is needed four to five hours per batch, depending on the weather condition. That means depending on the moisture content of the grain. Now we have the two heating options. One is LPG, another is rice husk briquette. And the production cost of this uh, BOS tread dryer is USD. $850. And what we have seen as operating cost is when it is LPG based, it is 0 0.93 taka per kg. It is Bangladeshi taka per kg of paddy and 0 0.78 taka per kg for the rice's bucket base. But in the, in the commercial space, two taka per kg is required for sun dry. And payback period of this machine is less than one year. And we can also save 2% of what the sun dry. And the video animation video were developed by Suabo USA, that is in Bangla and English, or in the YouTube. You can have a look with this 
the link is there. So try to sustain the, the impact of our development, especially for the US trade drive. You see uh, the US ambassador, Honorable Earl Miller, visited Wi-Fi engineering at local engineering workshops is producing this BOS tier prior in 2019. We have actually uh, shipped it to prototype of the BOS tier prior to National Agricultural Research Council in Nepal in December 2018. And now we are actually developing all the components of the BOS tier prior in Bangladesh. Now we are not importing anything. Now you see that's IANAP projects of Department of Agricultural Extension disseminated 184 BUS tier drives to farmers group. The Missing Middle Initiative project of PPO disseminated about seven BUS tier drives to farmers group. Individual seed traders purchased five drives from the project sites. And this BUS tier drive now included in the government subsidy program. So the government is providing 50 to 70% subsidy on agricultural machineries and BOS trade drive is included. So we have done a tri-party agreement between ACI Motors, the largest machinery marketing company in Bangladesh, and with this Agromac, who are manufacturing and looking up the quality and the filial Bangladesh. So that tri-party agreement is done to promote the BOS trade drive for this subsidy program. Now, we like to look at this drive for the commercial level, especially, you know, in Bangladesh, there are several types of rice mills, like the uh, automatic rice mills, the semi-automatic rice mills, then the major rice mills, and commonly locally husking mills. But in the automatic and semi-automatic rice mills, they have the dryer, but in the major rice mills, the number is about 14,500 in Bangladesh. They are actually facing a tough competition with this automatic and semi-automatic rice mills and they are going to out of business. So they need badly the dryer. So we we'll try to find out the appropriate capacity and we have worked with many of these uh, major rice mills and we know that what is their present capacity that you see the capacity utilization of this mill. rice mills are very low, it is 15, 16%. And it is very, very small and only few of them around 33%. But if they use the capacity with the mechanical dryer, there is the potential of increase this actually future capacity or capacity utilization of the, uh, those uh, rice mills. And we have found if they have a 12 ton capacity, they can gain the maximum, it is 72.5%. So we have designed a 12 ton capacity, a, actually a best dryer, which can actually uh, dry parboiled and as well as the aromatic uh, uh, paddy. So the, you see the picture of those that designed a uh, uh, dryer that has been installed and hopefully in a very short time, we can experiment on this. Now I'm moving to the actual storage farmers to commercial scale, I already mentioned during 2015 to 2018, work at the farmer's level. So these are the traditional uh, dry, actually storage, the, the uh, technologies. Now we introduce the grain pro bag, 40 kg or 50 kg, that is the hermetic bag, that is the airtight bag. Again, in the commercial scale, this is the picture of traditional way of store, but we have introduced this hermetic cocoon, five to 30 tons, at uh, rice mill level, as well as the BADC CD storage. So at farmer's level, in our experience, you see the insect infestation in this figure, the left-hand side figure you see. At six months time of storage, the insects found, the number was 131 insect found per 250 gram of paddy. But look at these are the traditional way of storage. But look at the grain pro and pig specs, that is the hermetic uh, way of uh, preserving it, the insect infestation was zero. In the case of the loss, we have seen this local traditional dole, motka, plastic drum, as much as 6.2% loss were actually registered. But in, in comparison, the grain pro and pig specs, it is almost none. So at least 
we can save a 5% loss of grain from that. What we have seen that is the rice moth, uh, especially the laser mill worm, larvae and adult, rice weevil and red clover beetle. These are the common actually insects we have seen in the stories of the farmers at the farmers level. And we have actually conducted the germination test and we found that in hermetic bag, the, when the seed is stored, the germination is always above 90%. And 80% threshold is uh, permeable, uh, uh, actually recognize the seed and it can be marketed in Bangladesh. Look at this performance of the cocoon. You see, these are the relative humidity and um, the temperature range. But look at this middle figure, picture. At the day of storage, the oxygen level in the uh, uh, hermetic bags uh, was 19.86 percent, but in at the day of 31st day of the storage, it gone down to 3.7 percent. Contrarily, uh, you see the carbon dioxide increased to about 11.25 percent uh, at the day of 31. So oxygen is depleting because of this respiration of the seed, as well as the insect and pest. So if the oxygen level goes below 5%, insect cannot lie. So in 30 days, all the insect within the bag, all are dead. So it is safe for long-term storage. On the other hand, you see this, the traditional hermetic storage, the moisture content is fluctuating in traditional storage. But in hermetic storage, the moisture content is always steady. And the germination is always high into the hermetic storage. And if the traditional germination goes down with the, with the time. What you have seen in the BADC, when the large scale seed storage is there, they need actually three to four times fumigation, two to three times insecticide application, sometimes de drying and relorting, moisture content vary with the conditions. And there are some environmental hazards because of the use of insecticide and pesticide. But in case of hermetic cocoon, nothing is actually with the, with, uh, with the, the environmental hazard or the human health. Only thing we need to dispose the, uh, the cocoon after use properly. If you see this uh, economic performance, as we have uh, compared the three conditions, one is when the cocoon is imported, it is 26% imported, tariff and duties are there. So, and the 5% germination loss saved. So if we consider this thing, that means all this tariff and it saves savings of 5% germination. If the actually the government wave off the duty and the tariff, and again, we have the 5% uh, grain saved. And if it is produced locally, then 50% cost will be saved and the germination loss saved. So, and with the traditional storage, as they usually do it, in the, the, and we see the PCR is just above one in the case of traditional storage, but in other three options, the uh, BCR is 1.192. That means just not too high, but it is uh, profitable in comparison to the traditional storage. But the cost of environmental cost and health hazard cost is not yet been included in this economic analysis. So the capacity building, we have actually developed some training manuals on BOS dryer and hermetic storage, business menu modules, leaflets, gender-based technology profiles on those technologies. So our videos, and we have already developed two videos, one on BOS dryer, another is hermetic, but it is under process. Hopefully in, the, in a just two weeks time, the video will be ready. So we have published a number of journal papers, MS, as our vice chancellor mentioned, that there are three PhD that is completed, nine MS is completed, and uh, now around 15 uh, students are enrolling uh, with this program. We have actually uh, conducted the training and demonstration, and we have actually conducted a few uh, workshops like this one. Now, the collaboration studies, we have a very good collaboration with the public sector partners like the Department of Agricultural Extension, the promoting the BUS to drive to farmer school. Bangladesh Agricultural Development Corporation intends to adopt hermetic storage at six centers. Now we are working with them, and in a two weeks' time, we'll be actually 
uh, uh, have a meeting with the BADC chairman and the civil society like the Jagarni Chakra Foundation of Joshua working with us. Private sector like ACI Motors is working with us and marketing the hermetic bag as well as the US Tour Dryer Agdomac Development Initiative intends to produce the uh, nationwide promotion of US Tour Dryer. And the local partners, you know, Amin Electric, Viva Engineering, Kamal Machine Tools, Mahbub Engineering, they are locally producing and marketing the US Tour Dryer. And Bond Engineering Workshop of Jamalpur is producing and market of 12 ton capacity dryer locally. So all of our activities now, we have a, uh, you know, the website called Image, that is innovation in mechanized agriculture and green energy, we call it Image, under the domain of Bangladesh Agriculture University. You can visit anytime through these links and you can have all of our activities there. So finally, uh, there are some urgent policy interventions that needed, especially, you know, that the policy decision for adapting hermetic bags and cocoons at public and private sector, especially for the grain and the food storage is really important. And um, there should be some policy uh, for waiver of the taxes and duties on imported hermetic bags so that uh, actually uh, the commercial uh, entities and even the public entities can use those uh, cocoons uh, very, uh, actually economically and inclusion of hermetic bags and cocoons in public sector subsidy program, government is providing the subsidy. And there should be a clear instruction to the private and public commercial banks for disbursing at least 15% of agricultural credit to agriculture machinery, especially uh, for the post harvest machinery. And again, the prefer preferential credits from the public private sector banks to measure husking mills and husking mills to adapt this locally made suitable dryer for their conditions so that they can survive in the business. And finally, I like to promote our agricultural engineers who will be working in the Department of Agricultural Extension need to be uh, uh, recruited immediately for effective and successful implementation of agricultural mechanization strategy of the government of Bangladesh. So last one, but not the least, I like to recognize the, the future contribution, the contribution of USA, Kansas State University, the Philil USA, um, University of Illinois, ADM Institute at, uh, at Illinois, Bangladesh Agricultural University, Bangladesh Agricultural, Development Corporation, Department of Agricultural Extension, Private Sector Partner, ACI Motors Limited. And like to thank again all the participants who are actually patiently getting my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Alam. As always, that was a tour de force. You, you've accomplished so much. Uh, the two chains that you've mentioned, working with the farmers and working with the private sector, I think really shows how PHLIL, Bangladesh, and you are leading the way across the food system. Uh, so I will pass now to uh, Dr. Ahmed Kablan from USAID, from the Bureau for Resilience and Food Security. Uh, Dr. Kablan is a leader in the space of food loss and waste. He knows your work very well, Professor Alam, as you know. So rather than comment extensively myself, Pat. Dr. Kablan, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Uh, hi, good afternoon, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alam and uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, country team who are part of the Post Harvest Loss Redu Innovation Reduction Innovation Lab. And thanks for our partners from uh, who have been part of this journey from the beginning, the ADM Institute and other uh, the reminder of the researcher teams who worked in different countries in Guatemala, uh, uh, Ghana, Ethiopia. Uh, as well as uh, other neighboring country to Bangladesh and Afghanistan and Nepal. As, as you know, post harvest loss have been a core part of USAID research investment for the last uh, eight plus years. 
and uh, uh, we have started uh, the research in looking at technologies that are suitable for local solution or for local applications. We, our intention with these two investments, the Post Harvest Source Reduction Innovation Lab and the Food Processing Innovation Lab that were awarded at the same time, uh, are to look and consider technology solution and innovations that are easy to build, easy to uh, assemble, easy to adapt and to maintain uh, locally in the country where we're, this will be uh, taken up. Um, <clears throat> now, this year and, and during in September during the UN Food System Summit, U.S. government and U.S. aid uh, renewed our com uh, the commitment for uh, reduction of food loss and waste and toward achieving the SDG 12.3 or having food loss and waste by 2030. Uh, to that end, uh, the Biden-Harris administration uh, announced uh, their commitment to end hunger, malnutrition, and support the establishment of a sustainable, resilient food system. And part of that was the announcement of a new uh, research fund that will, be, will support this initiative of a $60 million of research funds. Uh, that will support uh, the development of technologies, behaviors, innovations, and this uptake and scaling of this work to reduce post food loss and waste. And uh, uh, at the same time, USAID joined uh, the Friends of 12.3 Champions. As you know, those are the champions 12.3 to, to achieve the target or to support member country achieve 12.3. USAID, uh, or uh, also the US government as a whole, with the leadership of USAID, EBA, and USDA, joined the Food is Never a Waste Coalition, as well as at USAID, we established the flow uh, community practice, or the food loss and waste community practice, where we invited members from private sector, uh, uh, as well as academic uh, researchers, including the Post Harvest Loss team, to join this and to help us in a scoping study that will be hopefully starting commission soon, to identify a couple of countries where we can have high opportunity to reduce food loss and waste. We have the highest partners of private sector working in it and where we can show that with the appropriate technologies, with appropriate uh, mindset and behaviors changes, as well as with the appropriate partners, when you can bring them, you can actually bring about reduction of food loss and waste. Uh, at the same time, you, uh, RFS, USAID, we uh, established the mission of standard, which are these missions that they are not uh, not by standard, the upstanding that they are intentionally programming, intentionally working, and uh, they have it as a critical part of their food loss and waste reduction, uh, food loss and waste reduction part of their programming, especially when we're talking about productivity programs. Bangladesh is one of those upstanding mission as Bangladesh mission have been a critical supporter and a partner for us uh, uh, throughout our journey in, in, in Bangladesh. Uh, teams change in, the bang in Bangladesh, uh, but we have been very lucky to have supportive team from our colleagues and foreign service uh, officers or and as well as our foreign service nationals. And yesterday was our uh, foreign service national recognition day. And I want just to pay my respect also for all of our amazing foreign service national colleagues at the Bangladesh mission. Um, uh, at the same time, USAID, we have been positioning both harvest loss uh, and food waste or flow as a core part of some of the most two recent strategies. For example, the uh, global food security strategy update that we just updated and it's a five-year strategy from 22 to 26. Food loss and waste have been elevated and raised as part of the core things to achieve our sustain our to help us achieve a sustainable, resilient food system. In the draft climate strategy that is out right now for public comment, and I, after this, I will drop the link for it in the chat in case you would like to take a look and provide comment on it. We have also placed food loss and waste as an example where uh, we can work uh, to address it, and by addressing food loss and waste, we are not only uh, uh, addressing uh, food insecurity and the inefficiency in the food system, but also we are being, uh, it is a work that provides benefit toward adaptation and mitigation of climate change. As we know, agriculture sector, agricultural productivity systems, they are both in, impacted in both directions by uh, climate change. And climate impact the productivity, but also food systems and agricultural production systems, as have been shown recently in some of the publication, contribute to a third of the greenhouse gas emission. So if we are reducing the food loss and waste, that is about 10% contribution 
uh, to global climate uh, global global gas greenhouse gas emission coming from food loss and waste it is a low hanging fruit an easy target to hit and it is just the right thing to do and without really uh, tackling the issue of food loss and waste uh, at, at coming or delivering a safe and nutritious diet sustainably through resilient food system is impossible. With that being said, I thank uh, the Bangladesh team work, I thank the Bus Harvest Loss Innovation Lab work and the support we have received from the partners, including our, also our support from Bangladesh Mission that are helping us toward the, to, uh, getting one step closer toward achieving that. The uh, one thing that also I want to mention, which Jagger mentioned, to that end, we are we are in the process of finalizing uh, uh, an extension for the post harvest loss lab. Hopefully for one year to focus on the scaling of uh, innovative technologies that have been shown, shown prove, prove concept in them and uh, to get them to the hand of and Bangladesh team, thanks to the leadership of Professor Alam and team there, they have been leaders in getting these technologies into the national systems, into the government subsidies. So thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Kablan. That was a great way to wrap up the session. And thank you for all of your efforts to elevate food loss and waste in the U.S. government's priorities. Uh, I know that the success of, of the Bangladesh team and so many others who are funded by USAID in the food loss and waste space really helped with that. In the interest of time, I would like to thank our chief guest, our chief patron, and Professor Alam for that very informative uh, and inspiring talk, uh, talk. We're really excited always to see the progress you're making and the impact that we can have. So with that, I pass to Professor Saha for the next session. Danyabad. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harvey, for chairing the inaugural session, and it was really nice to hear uh, from the presenter and distinguished speaker in the inaugural session about the post harvest laws and the technology intervention. So uh, now, actually, we'd like to move to the panel discussion session for the interest of time, and we'll have uh, actually question answering after the, uh, our panelist uh, uh, speech. So, uh, so I would like to welcome you all our panel discussion session. The theme of the panel discussion session is saving post-harvest laws, a way to enhance food and nutrition security. We have distinguished panelists, uh, Dr. Robert Bob Ziegler, Chair External Advisory Council, Feed the Future Innovation Lab for the Reduction of Post-Harvest Laws, uh, Kansas State University, USA, Mr. Mohammed Manjurul Hannan, Managing Director, Hortex Foundation, Bangladesh. Uh, Dr. M. A. Mutin, former Director General, Rural Development Academy, Bangladesh. Professor Dr. Mohammed Manjurul Alam, Principal Investigator, Bangladesh Agriculture University, Bangladesh. So I would like to request our panelists to turn on their video. And each speaker will get five minutes to talk about the crucial issues on the Relate selected topics, then we will open the floor for question and answering. And you can also put your question in the chat box while our panelist uh, is speaking. So first, actually, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed Manjul Alam, who just uh, presented about the filial activities, uh, actually, uh, who is also leading to Feed the Future program, post harvest loss reduction innovation lab Bangladesh, and appropriate scale mechanization innovation hub Bangladesh. As you said in your presentation, uh, Professor Alam, that post-harvest loss is one of the major issues in Bangladesh where it needs technological intervention. And Philil core program is ending its nine years of work at the end of 2021. As an academician and researcher, what do you expect from the public sector extension agency and private sector to push your innovation over the line of sustainable scaling and securing food and nutrition by reducing post-harvest loss. In another question that uh, I'd like to throw, that what would be the future direction of research for combating post-harvest loss at the same time, finding a way of enhancing food and nutrition security in Bangladesh? Uh, now the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Choyam. And you just uh, open up the proposition that uh, how do we feel uh, the collaboration and the cooperation we need from 
is public and private sector partners who will be actually continuing this innovation as well as scaling up this technology and sustaining this technology in Bangladesh paradigm. Before that, I like to just open a new area that is I'm really concerned about, that is the innovation ecosystem in Bangladesh. It is really important as because as a researcher, what I felt that most of our funding, especially if you see this R&D fund in Bangladesh, especially we, the people who are working at the university. What we have seen that most of this funding for the innovation in Bangladesh is very short and it is one to three years and mostly of one years. So it is really not educated to have a technology to that scale to the appropriate and to scaling up to sustain that technology at farmer's field as well as the national level. Especially you see the sum of the technologies like whenever we do some uh, research on breeding or variety or machinery development, it takes us actually the few years time. Uh, as we see, we have done in this Philil Bangladesh project. Another important issue, what I see that uh, in most of the cases, the physical and the human resource development are the mostly ignored in short term R&D support. Even in the long-term R&D support, the human capacity building is mostly ignored. What I think, and again, another important area, this is the research partnership. Collaboration uh, among the research institute, among the public sector institute, among the private sector institute is still uh, lacking in Bangladesh. And beyond the Bangladesh, as we have the collaboration with the American universities, especially the Kansas State University, the University of Illinois, we know, we understand that an ADMI Institute. So as we are collaborating and uh, a few other countries' partners, they're also involved in this research process. Now we are in the global level of collaboration. What is we, that technology transfer or knowledge transfer is really, really uh, to be good when international collaboration is there. So this, this environment needs to be changed. What I always talk about, you know, in a, in a small area that is in development of a research. Whenever we propose a research, we need to develop the lab capacity as because in most of these sophisticated instruments and equipments are not available. So lab capacity development is an important thing. More important is the human capacity development. That's the people who from the researcher and the students or the scientists who will be working within that lab. So their capacity to be involved. So if there is the capacity of lab development and the human resource development and collaboration with this international developed universities or labs, so there should be a knowledge transfer, there should be a technology transfer. And if so, so there will be the research and research always generate knowledge and technology. So that will solve the problem at the field and that knowledge, again, it, it will go to the curriculum of the university so that the next generation graduate are equipped with that knowledge and when they go to the field, they can sustain the technology. So what you see that that sorts of innovation ecosystem is lacking still in Bangladesh. We have some system, but it, it is not adequate. So what is our experience from this Philil Bangladesh? We have been working for the more than seven years, eight years, and we have another stairs of extension. So for this long time and continuous collaboration, national and international collaboration that give us an age to develop and mature a technology, then developing collaboration with the public sector institution like Department of Agricultural Extension, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute, uh, Research uh, Bangladesh Agricultural Development Corporation. We are actually collaborating with the research institution and the private sector company like, you know, this ACI Motors or the Metal or the Abedin. So many actually the public and private sector partners now we have in a, in a same platform. Now we have the opportunity to innovation to impact. And that's why we see that these technologies, especially the BOST dryer is included in the government subsidy program. 
So I like to thank again the Ministry of Agriculture, especially our Honorable uh, uh, Minister Dr. Abdul Rajak MP. He has taken a keen interest to promote this technology uh, in this uh, actually the subsidy program. So that experience, what I like to say, that that sorts of collaboration in country and and the abroad for technology transfer, knowledge transfer, and building a innovation and dissemination ecosystem is really important. So that's my proposition. In future research, yes, we are working in the post-harvest technology areas. We have worked on the grain, but we have to work on these perishable products like the fruits and vegetables. We know that there are two chains there. One is the dry chain, another is the cool chain. So in the dry chain, we need to develop appropriate fryers and processing for and value addition for these perishable products, especially the fruits and vegetables. And in the again, in the cold chain, we need to develop some cool chamber, the cool van and cold storage. Again, not only that, that is, uh, that is the preservation or transferring from one place to another, but it is readily to be had available like the you know, the sorting, grading, quality maintenance, ready to cook, processing, validation, such type of work we need to do further. Even we know that the fourth industrial revolution is approaching. As we are lagging behind, we are still trying to cope with the second industrial revolution and the third industrial revolution, that is the automation and, and use of the sensors. Now we are at the artificial intelligence uh, era. So we need to actually, incorporate this automation, the use of IoT and use of artificial intelligence in the post harvest research area, where the resources need to put the thought and actually go forward. So this is all about the initial talk. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chan. Uh, thank you, sir. Actually, uh, what you have mentioned that it's really, we need a long-term collaboration among the uh, development partners and research institute and also that what you have highlighted there that knowledge transfer is also necessary and capacity building of the local stakeholder as well as the institution is actually quite important to combat the post harvest loss and what you have mentioned that also we need to look at the perishable products is quite important where we need to focus so thank you sir again so now i'd like to move uh, to another panelist, Mr. Manjurul Hanan, who obtained his uh, BSc Agriculture degree from Bangladesh Agriculture University and Master's degree in Environmental Science from the Stanford University, Dhaka. He started his career in 1982 as a Bangladesh Civil Service uh, cadre and served the country in different capacities in different development of the uh, Department of the Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Mr. Hanan served the Department of Agriculture Extension and the largest, the largest establishment engaged in technology transfer to boost up production skill development of the farmers that helped the country move forward self-sufficiency in the food production. He ultimately led the DE as a Director General until his retirement from the government service. He also served in the Bangladesh Cotton Development Board later in 2000. 17, he joined the Hortex Foundation as a managing director. There, he leads the senior professional, having vast experience in post harvest management and value chain development of high value crops. So, my question to uh, uh, Mr. Hanan, as you are, your uh, foundation is working with the perishable products, as Professor Allo mentioned that uh, we need to look at the post harvest uh, uh, loss at, and as well as the value chain, drying value and storage value chain of perishable products. And there is a quiet loss. We know that is, the loss is 20 to 40% in that area. So my question goes to you, what role should the Hortex Foundation others play for reducing post harvest loss of perishable products to ensure our national food system remains secure into the future, how might you relate food and nutrition security with the savings of post harvest loss through the state of our technologies? Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chan. Before uh, answering your question, I would like to say something about the uh, post harvest loss minimization. 
in my opinion, to minimize post harvest loss and to supply nutrition and safe food to the people of Bangladesh, we need a coordinating and comprehensive effort of all government and non government agencies, uh, especially public private partnership can solve the present problems and barrier in the production, processing, and marketing system. And we have to work in different stages and it should be in comprehensive way. The stages may be production stage of crops, the harvest uh, stage of crops, post harvest uh, stage of crops, production diversification, infrastructure development like backhouse lab processing center, appropriate technologies, uh, cool chain transportation, and a dedicated dry chain uh, transportation, development of appropriate packaging system, uh, improvement of assembling and retail market. And most important thing is that we should develop and improve our wholesale market. Otherwise, the post-harvest loss of perishable uh, goods will be the same. Awareness and motivation development and capacity building of the uh, related actors. And finally, uh, uh, in my opinion, commitment of social leaders and policy makers is important for the minimization of post-harvest loss. Uh, our Hortex Foundation established in 1993, uh, patronized by the Ministry of Agriculture, Government of Bangladesh. From the very beginning, we are working with the value chain development as well as post harvest uh, management uh, in order to boost up the export of the vegetables and fruits from Bangladesh to other countries. Initially, we started uh, contract farming and then uh, we uh, developed modern packaging system for uh, exporters. And we also started uh, capacity buildings of related actors. So uh, we work with the NGOs like BRAC and we also work with the processing industries like Golden Harvest, Eurasia, uh, etc., for uh, diversified product development. A Hortex Foundation implemented six projects by the financed by the World Bank, IDAFO. Uh, to minimize the post-harvest management, uh, post-harvest loss, and to provide quality and safe food uh, for uh, our people and for export purpose. Now we are working in NATP project with the DAE with the emphasis on improved post-harvest management practices to work better marketing system uh, in our working area. Its objective is our, our objective is to improve the value chain of the selected high well crops to reduce post harvest losses, uh, minimizing quality and safety to improve smallholder farmers access to market. And finally, to ensure better price for the farmers and for this, uh, uh, for this, uh, to achieve this uh, uh, goal, uh, we are working in 22 district and we established 30 um, rural uh, pack house that is a commodity collection and marketing center. We have uh, so many groups, about 400 farmers groups. We are, uh, uh, we are developing them as a uh, entity for uh, agricultural business, uh, agriculture development, agriculture business development, and to minimize the post-harvest loss for quality and safe food production. 
so uh, uh, Heart Ex Foundation is working from the very beginning in the post harvest to minimize post harvest loss and to develop good quality of product uh, through crop diversification and also uh, by minimum uh, crop process uh, through processing. So uh, our effort is continuing. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. It's, it's, we are really glad to know that at uh, Hortex Foundation uh, uh, working hard to reduce the post harvest loss, uh, especially in the high value crops. And that might also help us to uh, actually ensure our nutrition security in Bangladesh. So thank you very much uh, for your uh, push uh, comments and uh, discussion regarding the uh, questions. So now, I would like to go to our uh, uh, honorable panelist, uh, Dr. Robert Bob Jigler, who is the chair of External Advisory Council, Feed the Future Innovation Lab for the Reduction of post harvest Loss, Kansas State University, USA. He devoted his professional career to sustainably improving cereal production, primarily rice in the developing countries. Originally trained as a plant pathologist, he led increasingly complex multidisciplinary research program in Africa, Latin America, and Asia, culminating in his appointment as a director general of the International Rice Research Institute in 2005, a position he held until his retirement in 2016. He has worked closely with policymakers and very senior governmental officials in rice producing countries in Africa, Latin America, Asia, to link the potential of new technologies to political and economic realities. So, sir, my question to you, as you know that we are discussing regarding the post harvest loss and how we can link with the uh, uh, food and nutrition security. So my question to you, what role should international development partner play for reducing post harvest loss to ensure global food system remain secure into the future? And, and how might you relate food and nutrition security together with the savings of post harvest loss to the state of our technology? Sir, float to you. Uh, uh, Bob, are you there? Uh, Dr. Chan, probably there is a, yeah, the Bob is there. Sir. Hello. No, probably there was a connectivity problem. So let us wait for him, whether he has heard you, uh, it is really difficult to say. Uh, okay. Uh, At the same time, Dr. Motin is with us, so uh, we can uh, go. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Motin is, is on the way uh, to Dhaka, so he might join us after 10, 15 minutes, but we can open the floor for questions no, no. and answering. Bob is, oh, Motin Bob is, there. is there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Dr. Motin, are you there? Dr. M. Motin? Uh, uh, Bob, uh, are you there? Uh, there is a connectivity problem, I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let's uh, actually, uh, we can uh, go to our panelists when they join. So let's uh, open the floor. Uh, uh, for yeah, the Dr. yeah, Dr. Motin is here now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. please. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Motin joining us. Uh, he's a, actually, uh, who is an agriculture engineer and former director general of rural development academy, uh, Bogura, Bangladesh. During his service period, he developed 10 different models of rural development, uh, like uh, buried pipe irrigation system, demand-based low-cost uh, deep-tip oil 
arsenic uh, filtration plan, community based multi story rural housing for uh, uh, actually restoration of agricultural land, rural development, RDA credit model, etc. And he patented two technologies low cost deep table for this multi purpose use and water treatment plan for safe drinking water supply. He and his team is, has been awarded Independence Award 2040, Bangabandhu National Agriculture at 1415 gold medal, Africa Asia Rural Development Organization Ardo Award 2012, and, and Bogura Podok 20, 2002. So, so my question to you, can you hear me? Uh, maybe unmute your phone, uh, uh, please. Uh, we cannot hear you, please unmute yourself. Uh, you need to unmute your phone and yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, please. Okay, thank you very so, much. So my question to you, uh, what role should public sector development academy or institution play for reducing post service loss to ensure our national food system remains, remains secure into the future? And how might you relate food and nutrition security with the savings of post service loss through the state of our technology? So now the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Thank you, Professor Chayan. Uh, as a uh, in very, uh, present Bangladesh, the private and also the public, but the public like uh, institution, like the university, the uh, different agriculture research institution, they are doing uh, research. But uh, like uh, I was in the institution, Rural Development Academy Bogra or Bangladesh Academy for Rural Development will have also the research for adoption in the present socioeconomic context, context of Bangladesh. So uh, the basic fundamental research is done by the university or the uh, 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 Bangladesh Agriculture Research uh, Institution or the Rice Institution. But uh, our public uh, sector, uh, this is a this research is a continuous process. It is a not a erratic. So, uh, in our country, this uh, type of research we should carry forward. And up till now, uh, we are uh, always we have to do something for the uh, whatever the findings. Then if a uh, public uh, institution, they, were, they, they are with the, some of the time with the business mentality. But the public institution like our institution or university, we should do some of the research and that research can attract the uh, private uh, party so that they can apply. In, in Bangladesh, a lot of uh, entrepreneur or the private entrepreneurs, they are looking for some of the technique so that they can have their, their business extension, they can have, the way we can do, they cannot do the implementation part. So there is a role of private and public. Public is doing the research and then like uh, the, uh, some some of the uh, post harvest losses or the post harvest uh, preservation and uh, market uh, carrying and some other chain, dry chain or cool chain, different chain. So, if it's a, a like uh, our institution can prove the process. The jack fruit in Bangladesh, it is a national fruit. But during the season, but only due to the lack of proper handling or post service handling, huge quantity it is uh, losing. But uh, like in Indonesia or Thailand or Malaysia, they have the good processing and carrying and marketing system so that they can have the quality intact. And uh, this way, the nutrition status, also the business uh, ability, also the highest utilization of this type of uh, fruits is very important. But uh, a private uh, party 
they, they cannot invest like this type of uh, phenomenon. But in a public institution like uh, our institution or university, if we can prove that yes, the jackfruit you are selling only maybe 200 taka, but if it is a properly, it is a process and handling and the marketing, then that can be maybe 2000 taka. So this is the way if we can prove that yes, we are uh, with this way of handling, this way of post service handling or preservation, then you have a very good business and also due to the quality improvement of the ripened fruits, then they have the very big market and that there is a high standard they, they can maintain and they have, then they can get the better price. So in this way, we can attract the private entrepreneur. So in our, to me, a public sector, we are doing the research and we want to show the private sector that yes, it is a benefited business and this way the quality can be improved. This way the nutrition, uh, nutrition also they, you, you can improve. So our role is a technology transfer to the private sector. I think uh, this is uh, uh, up now, I can say this much. If you have any question, then Professor Chai and I can uh, reply you. Actually, I am on the way to, to journey uh, from Borishal to uh, Dhaka. So I'm sorry that uh, after a whole day, I am actually in the field. Okay, uh, Professor Chai. No, thank, thank, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, while you are uh, moving from Borishal to Dhaka. Dhaka. It's really yes, our yes. pleasure. Uh, yes. So, uh, uh, so uh, yes. Thank you, thank you. So uh, okay. actually, uh, our another speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Bob Jiggler, having some issue with the internet connection. Oh, he's, he's in now. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. So uh, probably, right. thank you very much for joining. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I'm repeating my question again to you. Uh, so uh, the question uh, was to you that what role should international development partner play for reducing post harvest loss to ensure global food system remains secure into the future? How might you relate food and nutrition security together with the savings of post harvest loss through the state of our technology? Sir. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Saha. And my deep apologies for the disruption. I was preparing to say a few words and then my computer uh, somehow dropped the conference and I fought my way back, but, uh, but here I am. Uh, and, and let me first uh, thank you all for, for putting this symposium together. It's, uh, as the other speakers have mentioned, it's quite an honor and a privilege to be, to be able to be part of this. Uh, this is an extraordinarily successful undertaking on the part of, of the scientific community of Bangladesh and, the, and BAU in particular and the government of Bangladesh to really make material strides in improving the situation of Bangladeshi farmers through the reduction of their post-harvest losses. And I think it's, it's quite impressive, the progress that, that has been made. Um, as our distinguished guests uh, uh, have mentioned, uh, this has been an undertaking by a number of institutions and a number of committed, uh, committed scientists uh, that I think is an example uh, really for, for all of us. And your specific question about uh, what the international community can do, uh, I think it's, it's really a question of how in our very modest efforts uh, from the international side, we can build upon the tremendous talents and commitments at the national level. Uh, without strong commitments uh, at the national level, at, uh, at various levels within the countries, any international effort will be, will be useless. So I think let's, let's make sure we have our priorities straight and the, uh, uh, the hierarchy correct that 
any significant progress is going to be made by the uh, by the national systems uh, writ very large. And I think when, when I was listening to the presentations uh, earlier uh, during the, in the morning here, uh, I was struck by the uh, the hierarchy of of challenges that face us. I, I believe it was uh, 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 Dr. Nasrul Islam, I think, who mentioned that we have to be concerned about food security, we have to be confirmed, uh, concerned about nutritional security, and we have to be concerned about safe food. And when we look at that, food security is really the amount of food that's produced, or nutritional security is the composition of the food that's produced and the safety of our food is the elimination of contamination uh, of our food supply. And these are, are very, very uh, legitimate uh, national priorities, looking at it from a national perspective. And I think that's very appropriate. But I think one of the beauties of the work of the uh, post-harvest loss uh, program in general in Bangladesh has been its ability to translate the national priorities that were articulated so well by our distinguished guests into the farmer priorities. And if we look at the farmer priorities, who is the ultimate determinant of the food security in, in our countries, uh, farmers are interested in a decent income. Uh, they're is interested in a decent quality of life and they're interested in the health and welfare of their families. And I think it's bringing together the challenges at the national level to the very real challenges at the individual farm level that really can make or can be the determinant as to whether or not our, our efforts are, are, are successful. And it's that intersection of farmer priorities and national priorities that I think we need to pay attention to. And I think the experience that has taken place in different countries is something that international partners can bring to share uh, with our national partners. Certainly it's clear that the work in Bangladesh is being highlighted uh, throughout the world as an example of how national institutions can make a significant difference uh, to, uh, for example, post-harvest uh, post harvest losses. And as I was, I was looking and, and thinking about the, the, what my remarks might focus on today, you know, it's just I keep coming back to how striking the losses are, the post-harvest losses, a third of the harvest or what have you. And when you consider that from the perspective of a farmer, uh, anyone who knows rice farming knows that it is an extraordinarily grueling, difficult undertaking. It's a very, very difficult way to make a living. And just imagine that quiet frustration of farmers after they have taken in their harvest, after a very uh, uh, demanding crop season of, of tremendous hard work, and then watch a third of it disappear as it is stored. Tremendously uh, frustrating and something I think that, that, we, shouldn't lose, uh, that we shouldn't lose sight of. Um, one of the, the challenges that, that I think is facing us uh, when we consider the situation in Bangladesh and really uh, throughout the world is, is looking at the transition from not quite subsistence farming, but standalone farming where the household needs, nutritional needs, economic needs are met from the on-farm activities towards a more economically integrated uh, rural livelihood where farm income is only a modest part of the income for the household but non-farm income becomes increasingly more important. And we have, as the rural sector becomes more integrated into, global, into the national economies, 
we have a situation where we will see farmers moving from on-farm processing of their harvest towards a more commercial relationship with the millers and dryers. And that transition is something we're seeing take place in Bangladesh. And I think it's something that we need to pay close attention to, as I think it indicates where the direction of, of post-harvest loss management will be going in the future. Uh, we saw the, uh, the in, in, uh, in Dr. Alam's presentation, a summary of the tremendous progress that's being made with the BAU SDR uh, dryer and how that's moving into uh, the commercial uh, drying and milling sectors of the economy. Started out as a simple uh, uh, drying process that could meet the needs of individual farmers, but it quickly became apparent that that capacity would have to increase and that eventually farmers were interested in being able to sell their grain to uh, local milling and drying facilities, getting a reasonable price and essentially transferring the burden of a lot of the post-harvest management from the farm to the millers and processors. And I think that's a very logical uh, progression. And I think it's quite striking to see uh, how the uh, BAU and, and partner institutions in both the public and the private sector have moved and made that transition from simply a single farmer on farm uh, post harvest loss reduction to a larger perspective that incorporates the, the larger grain market. And I think that's a recognition of the transition that's taking place in rural Bangladesh. The uh, effort to connect every village to the internet in Bangladesh is a step that will completely transform how the rural economy of Bangladesh takes, uh, uh, takes shape and it develops. And that will have a very important impact on how we manage our uh, crops, how we manage our crop storage and, and processing. So what I'm looking at is, is I see a situation where we have a very dynamic rural economy in Bangladesh, Bangladesh that's changing very rapidly. The, the, the demand for how the crop is managed after harvest, how it is stored, how it is marketed, is going to change pretty dramatically. Uh, how much, 10 years from now, how much grain will be stored on farm as opposed to how much will be sold immediately after harvest, I think is something we need to pay attention to. It's quite likely that farmers will be storing very little grain on farm. They will be selling their grain and then purchasing as they need throughout the year. That's certainly been the, the, the uh, history throughout the rest of the rest of Southeast Asia and South Asia. But having said that, I think it's the question of how we manage that transition uh, that we have to take, uh, pay particularly close attention to. And then I think uh, taking a further step back and looking at how farmers will be viewing their rice crop or whatever crop, the crops they're growing, hopefully more, more diversified in the future, is they will be increasingly commercial in, in examining their, their opportunities. Uh, the consumers in Bangladesh, let alone the international market, will be much more demanding on the quality of their crop, the nutritional value of the crop, and the safety of their crop. And so I think the pressure will be on both the farmers and the millers and the processors to, uh, to produce a very high quality product. And that'll be a product not just in terms of grain quality, but also the manner in which it's produced. Our consumers uh, around the world, and, this is, and Bangladesh is no exception, are demanding a higher quality uh, crop. They, would, they are demanding that our rice crop be grown sustainably. And if we consider 
uh, what happened at the COP meeting, the climate, great climate change meeting in Glasgow, which was just terminated. There was considerable concern about the impact of agriculture on greenhouse gas emissions. And we all know that rice is an important contributor uh, through methane. And there's a, a lot of attention being paid to reducing the impact of, the, of, of agriculture on greenhouse gas emissions. Jagger mentioned the importance of uh, eliminating post-harvest losses to reduce that net impact of uh, greenhouse gas, emis uh, gas emissions. And I think that's something that we need to, to pay attention to as well. So basically the, the, the notion that, that farmers will be growing their rice crop in their village for their own personal consumption is a situation that was the reality in many parts of the world uh, a generation ago. It's a reality that will not be a part of our world a generation from now. We're going to be looking at a completely transformed agricultural sector. Uh, it's up to us to make sure that the technologies are in place uh, for that transition to, to take place uh, as smoothly as possible. And that partnership between the international community and the national uh, efforts is something that uh, I think will be critical to that. So those are just a few remarks that I have. I don't know if I made all the ones that I wanted to, all the points I wanted to make, but perhaps in the discussion, some others can come forward. But thank you very much for this, uh, this opportunity, Dr. Alam, allowing me to, to interact with this group. Um, if there's any group, in the world that I would get up at four o'clock in the morning to, to meet, it would be my friends from Bangladesh. So it really is quite a pleasure to be to with you all again. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your thoughtful remarks. And you really men, mentioned that it's a very important point that when national priority goes with the farmer's priority, then we can really make, we can change something. So thank you again, sir. So now I'll uh, open uh, floor for the question for the panelist. If you have any questions uh, or remarks, you may ask our panelist. Uh, Especially, John, uh, uh, yeah. our uh, chip case. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 So, Honorable Enai Khan is yeah. still, still with us, and yeah. he, he has some comments. So we'll be really happy to hear from him. Yeah. So if. We, we are yeah, really Mr. happy that Mr. our Kani honorable is, chief guest is still is with us. I will be happy. Sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's a remarkable work uh, done by you, Mr. Manjuru Lalum, and your team, very mature team. When I look at their name, uh, <clears throat> and very balanced team, I would say, because both the gender are balanced. The women are there, the research said. And... Um, in this research also, uh, I have personally visited your university department and what I understand is a big component of renewable energy use. You know, that will a big contribution and uh, <clears throat> dissemination also very important uh, and collaboration with uh, uh, private sector, those who are uh, usually manufacture uh, this equipment so this is really a, a new uh, window is opening in this area, particularly in Bangladesh. And I'm sure for other countries as well, like Nepal and uh, Afghanistan and other countries, we can share uh, and new collaborations would be coming certainly in these areas for dissemination and uh, innovation. So really, really I'm excited though I'm now retired, but still I feel thrilled that our researcher like uh, Manjurul Alam and his team is doing good work. And I'm very, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? Um, again, I feel something good is going to be happen. When I heard something from Chuan Shah and also from Rustam Ali, I, I'm looking at your team. So I'm really, really hopeful and uh, days are not very far when this uh, technology, this machinery would be 
uh, using by our farmers and they would be benefited. And indirectly that might control even the diseases because the, with the um, loss of the harvest, post-harvest loss, we invite sometimes insects and rats and other things that uh, that are the all are the agents of different sort of diseases certainly and uh, it's really a, a, a multi-sectoral implication of this innovation. Thank you very very much, uh, Manjur Alam, and your team, and thank you USAID. Thank you also the Kansas and Illinois University because they are collaborating with us. This is not a new collaboration, but I'm very delighted that this is second time this extended with uh, Bangladesh Agricultural University team. So thank you very, very much. I'm still, I was uh, amazed by listening from different, different uh, specialists. Thank you very much. Thank you again. And those who are participated, they certainly would be uh, benefited. And I hope that those who are benefited in those who are participating in this program, they will try to mobilize the government as well as private sector so that this can be disseminated and improved in the days to come. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, blessing remarks and uh, comments. So uh, now the uh, floor is open for uh, question and answering. If you have any question, you can raise your hand or put your question in the chat box. We will just uh, uh, entertain one or two questions since we are already out of time. Uh, uh, please, uh, dear participant uh, or distinguished participant, if you have any question. Or remarks. Uh, 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 our uh, uh, we have a uh, um, uh, participant, uh, Dr. Mufa Sutter. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, turn on your video and uh, ask the question. Or your, yeah. put your comments, thank, please. Thank you, Dr. Shah. I cannot turn on the video, then I will lose the connection. It's ah, okay. weak. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no I'm problem. sorry, I cannot show my face. Thank you very much for inviting me to this wonderful symposium. I congratulate you all. It's, uh, it's really gratifying that my friends, I know you all personally, and I have visited your lab. Uh, to cut on these... Uh, 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 efficacy with words, uh, I would go to the point. Somebody made uh, a remark about sustaining these uh, knowledges and uh, the, the, the sustaining the use of the technology. So uh, if you look at uh, what has uh, Bangladesh experienced, I mean, there had been lots of other people who had been working here in the 70s, especially. And uh, if, if you look into the story of uh, uh, modern rises, spreading into Bangladesh. Then we see we lost a lot of time. Actually, uh, if we uh, consider that the rices came first in 1969 and then only 50% acre age were achieved, it took about 30 years. So, uh, and, and other innovations that go down to farmers. I mean, the finally adoption for what we are working. And if we look into the comments of uh, Ahmed Kablan about the interest of USAID, in, uh, in in preventing food losses, then and, and uh, probably he also mentioned that we need to go back to the farmers uh, with these technologies. And, and so, uh, I feel that the part of the research uh, has to uh, have a kind of um, action uh, as well at the same time reaching out to the farmers and uh, watching what prevents them or what are the constraints that. We think the technology is good, but the farmers are not really adapting. It has happened in many, many technologies, you know. Uh, so constraint to research to adoption at the same time, uh, after having any technology, going into the field and looking into its adoption rate uh, within the shortest possible time may give us an extra understanding to disseminate those to, for whom we are doing it. Because uh, if I can remember, 
the, the, the write-ups from IFPRI when it was first founded, and then John W. Miller was for a long time its director general, they were talking about post-harvest loss and the estimates, how much it is lost, how, much, how many people we can feed around the world if we can prevent those losses. I don't think those figures have changed much in these 30, 40, 50 years. So it is very important that we look into that kind of research at the same time that, um, that uh, consolidates our, our efforts and we can reach uh, with these results quickly to farmers. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you, sir, for your comments uh, and remarks. Uh, there is one question from Kamrul Hassan. The how based the benefits of research results can be transferred to farmers' field and house, or households without being burdened on the <clears throat> part of the small farmers. So if there is any panelist would like to answer the questions or put any comments. Yeah, I can respond to this question, you know. Please. Uh, thank you for the question, you know, that uh, particularly in Bangladesh, you know, the most of the farm households are very small farm households. So they cannot afford to buy even a small size of machine. And again, if they buy it, they cannot utilize its full capacity at the same farm uh, household. So in Bangladesh, there is a model we are promoting that is the customer service provision of any machines or technology. So in particularly in our program, we are trying to develop the actually local micro entrepreneur, we call it local service provider. So if local service provider buy the machine and provide, this, uh, provide services to the farmers, so that will be a win-win situation for both. That is the local service provider can make their uh, bread and as well as the farmers uh, don't need to buy the machine, but they can afford it with a, a reasonable cost. So that's the model we are promoting at the same time, a uh, few organizations in Bangladesh, they are promoting the, actually the farmers group. They are organized, organized the farmers group and the farmers groups are providing this, uh, buying these machines and providing services among them. Even in our neighboring countries, uh, in Asia, like in Philippines, in Thailand, uh, even in some India, these farmers group are doing really well. But in Bangladesh, they are local service provider, that means the individual service providers when it is providing service to the farmers that is doing really well. But in particularly in one of our actually research work, we are trying to look at the efficacy of those, that is the single machine entrepreneur or single shed entrepreneur, that means the single shed uh, actually own all the machines that provided service to farmers in all sorts of agricultural activities and the farmers group. And hopefully in next one or two years time, we'll have the answer and which one is doing and how. But as, a, a, as we have already established that customer hire service provision, that is local service providers provision is working well. And it is a win-win for both the farmers and the entrepreneurs. Thank you. Th thank you, sir, for your answer. Uh, 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 if there is no questions or comments, uh, still you can put your comments in the chat box. So. Uh, I'm not going to go all uh, to all panelists. I just uh, like to go again to Dr. Bob Jiggler. Just uh, put your concluding remarks and conclude this panel discussion session. Dr. Uh, Jiggler. Well, <clears throat> thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Saha. I, I think uh, the issue was raised uh, uh, most uh, by our last uh, uh, speakers around maintaining the relevance of our work to the farmers. If, if we are unable to uh, create the technologies and approaches and opportunities that make a material difference in our farmers' lives, no matter how good our technology appears on papers, how convincing it appears to policymakers, unless the farmers uh, experience an immediate positive return on the investments we're asking of them, uh, they will not adopt the technology 
and uh, if they do not adopt our technologies, we will not have the impact. So I think it's always it's always important to keep in mind. It's essential, basically, to keep in mind uh, the needs of the farmers, and especially to keep in mind that the environment, the social, cultural, economic environment in which farmers are living today is changing more rapidly, even in the most rural parts of Bangladesh, than it has changed over the past millennia. Uh, these farmers are, are existing in a rapidly changing world. Their children are existing in a world that their grandparents would never have recognized. And we have to make sure that our technologies are sufficiently flexible to be relevant in this future world. Uh, and it is going to be very different from our past world, that's for sure. Uh, just to, that's just a reminder, I think it's an obvious statement, but I think it's something we should always keep in mind. Uh, and it will keep us on our toes because the farmers will always surprise us, that's for sure. And once again, thank you so much for, for inviting me to participate. Uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be uh, with my friends from Bangladesh and Again, a congratulations for the fine work that uh, that you've been undertaking. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Bob Ziegler, for your concluding remarks. It's really wonderful to hear always from you. And we really need to work together to solve the problem for the farmers and to solve the post-harvest loss uh, problem in the local and as well as the globally. So now uh, we'll move to our... Uh, uh, now time for the closing remarks. Uh, uh, before going to the last speaker, I'd like to thank you all for your patience hearing and being with us. Due to time limitation, we could not address all the questions. We are very sorry for that, but your questions in the chat box will be considered as a compliment of the symposium and added in the symposium report. Uh, now I'd like to go to our uh, closing session speaker, Professor Dr. Mahmoud Nazul Islam who is a professor at the Department of Irrigation and Water Management, Bangladesh Agriculture University, Maimanching. And presently, he is the Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Engineering and Technology, Bangladesh Agriculture University. He is a frontier researcher in the field of irrigation and water management, surface and groundwater hydrology, climate change, and contributing over the years uh, for the development of agricultural production system through appropriate irrigation system. So I'd like to invite our Dean Sir to convey his concluding remarks and close the symposium. Sir. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon and good morning to everybody. So for me actually, uh, actually the post harvest loss, this is uh, not only quantitative, quantitative loss, but qualitative loss also. And this loss can occur in the various phases of the post harvest process like harvest, handling, threshing, drying, storage, and transport. And in total, if we see the loss is about 10 to 37%, so it's a very big percentage. And this loss, actually, uh, this is uh, related to uh, losses of money also. So if we can re reduce this loss, so we can have economic benefit and for, this is necessary for food security and food nutrition also. Now, the here, the, for drying, the, this loss is about down to 5% and for storage, it is two to 6%. Now for storage, we need to uh, keep the moisture at 12%, but during wet season, our farmers, they cannot dry it. So this project, this is, so that is the crucial, uh, uh, crucial uh, point for the for our farmers. Crucial. So, so this project post harvest loss reduction innovation lab, Bangladesh. I think that this is a very important project for our farmers. And so our Bangladesh team, they have come with, with the solution with the two solution. I, I have seen, uh, that is the BAU STR dryer and hermetic storage bags. And uh, 
their success i they have shown that the cost has a cost saved they have about cost saved about 26% and loss saved about 2 to 2.5 to 4% for sun for this stia uh, dryer over sun drying and for hermetic storage bags they have saved lost about 4 to 6% so it, i think so it's a big uh, big achievement i think and also they this this has been popularized they have also uh, able to make it popularized for the farmers also and among the uh, entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and government government organization and ngos and they have also good uh, success story also now they have gone for the second phase and so i think so in the second phase so that uh, the target is to um, introduce the appropriate scale dryer in husking mills and the hermetic bags for the this is for public and private sector paddy seed producers for ensuring seed quality and reduction of post harvest loss of paddy so actually i uh, what i feel the our farmers they are very poor so if the government comes forward and they give if they give they give subsidy to these farmers then i th i think they can uh, use it otherwise it will be very difficult for them to buy it because the farmers they don't have actually uh, mostly the our farmers are poor so in this respect i think the entrepreneurs they can come forward and initially uh, if they come forward with some um, uh, i mean uh, reduction in price of mesh yeah so maybe in future they can get benefit from that like so also uh, i think the policy makers um, especially what i say uh, what i'll say that if da or extend da if they come forward and if they take this technology and give it to the farmers and thing that in that case the farmers can be benefited so i hope that uh, this project will also go for the third phase if the donors come forward and i think it will be more uh, sustainable and so finally i thank this our team dr mundur alam uh, alom dr choyan shah and others for their great achievement and in future they will also do, do more uh, better and from my side that is from uh, din's side i i will give all supports all cooperation as our vice chancellor also said the university will give him more, uh, he is also very, very kind enough so with this uh, i thank you all and good night thank you sir yes. So with this, we...